I'm here with Lee Leachman and we're talking about genetics again for No Better Bull and today we wanted to hit on a fairly common topic but one that's still sometimes misunderstood and just just EPDs and and how they're used and I wonder if you just give me a just a little bit of a briefing on on just what what the purpose of using EPDs is. It's a great question John you know we've had EPDs now for about 20 years and they're you know, like the little black box or the transmission in your car, you can't fix it, you don't know what it does, but you're glad it's there. Um, you know, EPDs, what they do is they try to tell us how much of the differences we see in animals' performance is truly genetic. Because my dad always used to tell me, he said, you can go to a guy's place and you'll buy his genetics, but you won't get his management. In other words, if a guy feeds the heck out of his cattle and they're big or heavy or look good, you don't get the feed. You just get the underlying genetics. And so what the EPD does is it looks at how animals perform within contemporary groups, within animals that are reared at the same time and treated the same. And then it looks at the genetic linkages, in other words, parentage, how how the animal's related to parents and, and, and how siblings and, and offspring and, and parents and grandparents all performed in these various environments and gives you these genetic predictions. And we know they work. In fact, if John, if you were going to go out and pick bulls in the industry, you went out and picked them and just looked at weights and measurements. And if I went out and looked at the EPDs and we had the same herd of cows and we bred them to your bulls and bred them to my bulls, I would move nine times as fast as you would move using the EPDs versus just the weights. Can they uh, be misused? Uh, and, you know, certainly they're useful, but is there uh, kind of a chance that producers would, would use them incorrectly? I liken it as like a muscle car, John. You, you know, you step down on the gas and you go, and if you're not pointed the right direction, you go in the ditch. And an EPD is the same way. I mean, a lot of what we've been selecting for over the last 20 years is more and more growth, more and more size, more and more feed intake. You know, was that necessarily better? I mean, I think some people are disillusioned. They say, gee, my EPDs are a lot higher, but I'm not making any more money than I was three or four or five years ago. You know, market considerations the same. And so, yeah, I think they can be misused to put in too much of a trait. Still have to fit the cow to your environment, have to make the cows work on grass. Let's take milk EPD. That's a really non-controversial one. If you select for too much milk EPD, your cows won't rebreed. Misuse of the technology. So multi, multi-trait selection is, is important to, that as producers are looking at these EPDs and it can be kind of confusing, how do they... Uh, balance all the all the different EPDs to uh, get the kind of kind of cattle they want. The best balancing technique is to use the indexes. There are indexes that basically balance the traits based on each trait's contribution economically or financially. And those indexes are far better at balancing that than you or I are just doing it on the back of an envelope. And so we use that to make purchasing decisions, we use it to make mating decisions, we use it to pick which bulls we're going to use within the system. And so we really believe the indexes, and there are a lot of good indexes out there. Make sure the index factors in the traits that you're concerned with, and then those indexes will prove really effective for you.